All right, guys, have to go back again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News. Champions is over. Loud are the winners. So much reaction to this one. But also, Rostermania now is officially beginning. Many pros already eyeing up their next move. Shroud believes he's going to try and join a Tier 1 team. If he cannot, he's going to maybe start his own team and organization in Tier 2. And Tens reckons that regardless of the situation, he's going to do a fantastic job. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. You definitely want to sub right now because these next few days are going to be incredibly chaotic. Let's dive into how the champions concluded. First of all, real quick, this game one was, I think, really the dagger of the series to some extent here for Optic because they were probably on course to win this game one up against Loud. They lost a few of their final offensive rounds in a row to go to overtime at Loud, tied it up. This was a map where I thought Loud were pretty big favourites in fairness. I would have been surprised if Optic won this map and they were in position to do exactly that but um in the end it was uh well they went to overtime the overtime was crazy game had that ridiculous play and then this round honestly was um was such a crazy one i believe it was crashies that uh, almost clutched to one versus two but it was sassy in the end i mean look at this yeah crashies comes out puts him down to three hp misses the second right click burst of the classic and then well that's enough for sassy to get the kill and that was a big one as well to end up securing the overtime victory for um well for the loud guys so honestly optic they played great this series but when really push came to shove, it was the loud boys that really just had a little bit more in the tank. Game two, though, binds like this was always going to be Optic in Optic's favor. And this was a fantastic clutch here for Marv. Like this was just like this is what Marv's all about. Now, in fairness, he kind of struggled in this uh, in this well grand finals on the whole, really. But he did have some like classic 1v3 Marv moments. What I really love about this clutch actually is they're like, okay, he gets the first kill, gets the second kill. It's the third kill that's so good because a lot of players, I think, would have their crosshair way closer to the corner here. Like they would really like, um, you know, put their crosshair right here to like try and predict the guy. But he knows what's going to happen. He knows that the third guy is going to swing him. And he knows that if he just holds a little bit further out than most people do, then he's got a free tap by the time he can react to the guy coming around the corner. So I thought that was just a really nice little touch there. Because I feel like many players try and hold those angles too close when you know someone's going to swing you. Then they've got to flick again by the time he just, where he holds his angle a little bit wider, by the time they swing, it's an easy reaction headshot. So very nice one versus three. And they end up winning this series regardless, or they win this map regardless, without too many difficulties, right? So Aspas does make a nice play for the 1v3, but in the end, Optic have a little bit too much. And then this is another example of Optic just kind of, you know, once again, not exactly a throw from Optic necessarily, but this breeze it was, it didn't necessarily feel like a must win, but from the momentum side of things, Optic really needed to win this, I thought, just because they lost game one in overtime. They'll feel like in the back of their mind, they should have won that one. Then of course, well, they tied the series on binds. Then they go to breeze where again, I thought that probably Loud were favored, but um, still Optic have a, a great chance to close a lot of this out but in the end Loud's offense in overtime was just way too good here like um, their offense was so clinical Optic were lucky to even stay alive at times I thought in this overtime and Loud in the end just won pretty much everything in overtime at least on their offenses and then eventually closed out the map so this I thought was going to be a bit of a dagger in the series really because from a mental perspective it's so hard when you've lost one overtime you should have won then you've lost another overtime like um, and the only map you won was a blowout like um, yeah it's really frustrating when you lose in that way and then I still thought that Haven probably was going to be optic favored but at this point I was pretty confident Loud were going to win the series because their icebox is very strong and it was an icebox game five Loud decided to ban out a fracture and get rid of that for the map pool in the ends and uh, I mean yes this was the round really that won them champions here it was 9-5 optic still could have made a comeback here right defense on Haven it's certainly possible to do exactly that but less comes through and uh, you know with of course well initially the Vandal and gets all five kills here so this to me was the ace that pretty much secured the deal for Loud what a performance from them honestly such a great team the well the talent they've got on their roster but also everything else about it is just like so impressive the way they work together as a team the individual level that less and you know aspas kind of put on the table and sassy as well of course has his moments as well and obviously of course like look they played very well but um i think at times they're too reliant on certain players fantastic team but they are prone to some mistakes and we saw a few of those mistakes cost them really in this series so loud on top congratulations to loud but also the entirety of the brazilian scene optics results this season are pretty insane they had a first place they had a third place and they had a second place so they had all the different medals from the season and um yes loud then go on to tie up the kind of score line between optic and loud all time three and three this season between the three well between the two greatest teams in the world right now and um honestly it's it's crazy like what this is going to mean for next year's franchising right in the north american well in the americas region right with optic loud all going to be there and um, well hopefully they get to maintain their roster that is still a question with optic because we don't know until next week we believe 
when these organizations are getting announced, really, what organizations actually get through. Yeah, he says he'll work hard in the offseason, so I do not feel this again. And I think generally the, the kind of perspective was from Chet and others on the team that they would kind of be back next year. So kind of implying that they're confident they'll be back as the same roster next season under the same organization, which you'd imagine will be the case, but it is still far from guarantees. Now, just to mention this, it allows kind of not exactly dominance this tournament, but um, it was very impressive, the actual percentage of rounds they won. Winning almost 60% of all your rounds you played over the course of an entire tournament is very impressive. You see Optic won 55% at Reykjavik, FBX won 53% of their rounds at Copenhagen. It's allowed effectively the most dominant victory of the season so far. And the season, of course, is now over. So that is it. Loud are the world champions. And this is kind of crazy to think about, really, the fact that over the last uh, several international events, it's the first team from outside North America and Europe to actually have won a major like this. But over the six different internationals, there's been six different winners. So, like, um, really exciting stuff going into the franchise era. Like, it kind of sets things up incredibly nicely as well. Now, just wanted to mention real quick before we discuss the whole roster mania discussion that's well, about to begin. But the Stinger is apparently receiving a buff relatively soon. I think we saw that kind of talked about a few days ago in the public beta environment. Now, last champions, there were 29 Stinger kills. This year, there were 154, with Victor getting a lot of them. So the Stinger is a very viable weapon right now and is actually getting buffed. So a little bit of a strange decision, I think. Maybe they will or will not follow through with it. Wanted to look at some of the viewership numbers as well over in terms of peak viewership, one and a half million, which are really great numbers comparing to like Counter-Strike Majors and the like. Of course, you know, to a certain degree here, there are watch parties and everything that's going on. So yeah, it helps the numbers and it's on all platforms platforms as well to a certain extent. And when the Brazilian scene or the Japanese scene, for example, is involved, the viewership is going to be great, of course. But, you know, it's pretty cool to see because the drops, of course, happened. But I think a lot of people stayed around long after the drops were gone because the series was just so intense. and There were so many great maps and moments of that series. Over 1.2 million average viewership as well for the grand finals, way up on last year's numbers. So expected in fairness, but still impressive results going into partnership for next season. Now, speaking of partnership, the rumor has it that next week, there is going to be, which I guess is this coming week, I suppose, or like maybe, I don't know, in the coming days at least, there is going to be confirmation of which teams get into partnership. The teams that are shortlisted, they know whether they've been shortlisted or not, but they don't know yet whether they're actually going to have a spot in the league, and the teams will be determined over only the coming days. Exciting scenes. He also, I believe, confirmed there's going to be an event in Japan sooner rather than later. Now, Shroud has given his opinion here, right? Because Shroud, of course, he said that if the America's League was based out of Los Angeles, where he lives, then he will intend to compete there, right? And hopefully be in the tier one scene on the six, seven, five, however many North American teams there are going to be. He wants a spot on those rosters. Tens reckons he can certainly do it. But last night he was actually interviewed during the series itself where he stated that like, yes, I am intending to make the return tier one if possible. And if not, then tier two will be the option for him. He does definitely want to compete and get back in business and says that if it is tier two and he doesn't get an offer from the organizations that get into the partnership league, then he will probably maybe even start his own team and build up some young guys from scratch. Uh, I know everyone at home's wondering, I know you talked about a little bit on the gold carpet, but uh, what's next for you, man? Because there's obviously been a lot of rumblings, a lot of chit chatter. Uh, what's the deal? <laughs> I mean, the deal, the deal is hopefully jumping on a team, whether it's tier one, whether it's tier two. If it's tier two, I'd like to start a team. Okay. Maybe, get some, maybe get some up and comers. If it's tier one, I mean, of course, I want to see how well I can do in like a full scale Three to three to six months, like really, really go hard. Yeah, I, I only played for like three weeks. Yeah, you know, I, I think I think Mike would play fantastic. A little bit more, uh, a little bit more time. In, in my people, personal opinion, no bias. Hey, dude, Shroud, like, don't actually, the game, don't matter the event. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, my man. Let's so Tins reckons that Shroud can still do a great job wherever he goes. Of course, we don't know which teams are actually going to form next season. We have a good idea of which organizations might get through, but it's still not at all guaranteed right now. And many players, even the likes of Stewie 2K and even Prods, right, as you guys can see right here, and also Shroud, are looking to get involved. And, you know, to what extent will these organizations consider the clout aspect and the fact that, well, look, if we do, because Shroud isn't necessarily going to be on Sentinels next year. He might be, but I think it seems rather unlikely. But Shroud, of course, is kind of happy to go to another organization. Zombs might be in a slightly different boat where Zombs probably kind of wants to stay as part of the Sentinels brand, even if he does have an offer elsewhere, which he may or may not do. But Shroud definitely indicating his intention to play at the very least, and Tens reckons that he can be a fantastic player for wherever he goes. So, and maybe Tens is saying, look, bring him back to Sentinels. Thinks he could be pretty good there, but they might, of course, build a rather different roster next season because Sen would be probably top 
one, two organizations on my list at least for organizations that are 99.99% likely to make it through to franchising for next season. We shall see in the coming days. And this is only the beginning, right? The first rumors here emerging about what Shroud might do over the coming days. Many rumors will be emerging as to what organizations are planning to do what, which organizations have actually got through. And once that is confirmed, then these teams have to determine their teams. And there are going to be many free agents on the market, big roster period to come. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us YouTube gods this is a good video. I'd also like you should see it as well. And hope grow the competitive Valorant community. Thank you as always. Take care, and I'll see you next time.